Have you ever struggled to write the content for your about page on your photography website? If so, you will love today's video. I'm really excited to be bringing you collaboration with Ashlyn Carter. Ashlyn is a phenomenal writer, business leader. Her blog is so inspiring and I love following her on Instagram. She's going to share with you today, after her 10 years, 10 plus years of copywriting, the best way to write an about page for your photography business so that it speaks directly to your clients. Thanks so much for having me on, Jamie. I am honored and excited to get to talk about about pages. About, about. Does talking about yourself on your about page bring to mind those Charlie Brown teacher talking at the front of the classroom sounds in your head? If you're a creative small business owner, you've realized you have to have that bio page. So in today's video, I'm bringing you seven tips to write a better about page. Well, hey there, and if we haven't met yet, my name is Ashlyn Carter. I am the calligrapher and copywriter behind the brand Ashlyn Writes, where I help creative entrepreneurs just like you sell more with your words so you can work from a place of rest, not hustle. The first thing I want you to do is start with your attention getting why. Your first sentence should be an attention grabber that gives your reader a warm pat on the back. It says, hey you, I hear you and I wanna meet you right where you are because my passion is serving people just like you. Do you see that this sentence is not gonna brag about your successes? That'll come later, but first we wanna keep this really, really client or customer focused. Take this cue that I pulled from Meet Edgar, a social media scheduling tools about page. They say, we created Edgar so professionals could manage their social media with more consistency and in less time. See how that statement is so focused on the customer or the client and not as much focused on Meet Edgar? That's what I want you to do here. Tip number two, reassure your reader with a line that he or she is in the right spot. You've likely heard the secret to copywriting, and if you haven't, here it is. It's never about you. It's always about your reader. So write your next line to continue to offer reassurance and tell your reader they're in the right spot. I pulled three killer examples from you from my students that have gone through my Copywriting for Creative signature program, and I wanted to read them to you. I went through the exact same questions you're asking when I planned my own wedding. I know firsthand all the balls you need to juggle when it comes to developing and growing a beauty brand. Definitely not me. And this one, which I love. This student works with women who are recovering from eating disorders. Lost and alone are only good words if you're in anthropology, not in recovery. Pretty good, right? Number three, I want you to drop your credentials. And I want you to make them fun, but I also want you to make them fast. So you've got to give people a reason to listen. And now that you have, you've earned the right to talk about yourself. So here, go ahead and give your name if you haven't yet, or if it's not really blazingly obvious on your website. I've been to a couple of sites this week even looking for the person's name behind the brand and I can't figure it out. So sometimes that confuses me a lot. So go ahead and give your name and also give your credentials. After all, you are a business professional. It's important to list those noteworthy accolades and things that you've done, how you've cut your chops and come up in the business that you're in. Maybe you have nabbed an impressive title or won some kind of award. You've worked with a certain number of clients or you have some A-list clients that if you name them, your audience is gonna listen up. Go ahead and have fun with it. And here is where I will answer the question, how long does my about page need to be? Like any page on your website, only as long as it takes to get the message across clearly. I say that because chances are you may be divulging into a little much information right up here at the beginning of the page. And if you wanna get into more of a long form about page, which is totally fine if people stay and read it, you can do that later and share more of your story on down the page. But for now, we're gonna include the tidbits that your ideal client or customer is gonna actually want to know and leave out the rest. Tip number four, if you are a personal brand and many of us as creatives are, you're gonna wanna go ahead and pepper in non-professional tidbits now. People buy from people, so go ahead and give a little color as to who you are as a person. Maybe it's things you like or books you've read, places you wanna go in the world. The way I look at it, your website is kind of like your digital home, right? And your about page is kind of the kitchen. It's where everybody ends up at some point, and it's kind of where the lifeblood and the heartbeat of the house is. So when you go into somebody's house that you're starting to get to know, maybe you don't know them super well, you notice things. You notice what they read, you notice what's on the counter, you see things on the fridge, you start to get a little bit more of an idea about who they are just as a human. I want that same thing to come across here on your about page. Tip five, read everything you've written and knock yourself down a notch or two. Now, this may not be a completely new section, but I want you to go back and look over what you've written so far and see if you've kind of amped yourself up and given yourself a whole lot of unicorn factor, and then just show me your brush strokes a little bit more. Maybe you have a funny quirk or a vice, a laughable moment or a situation that shows you're just human. The best role models and people that we like in life show us their imperfect side from time to time, so don't be afraid to do that on your about page. 
Tip six, paint a picture of what it's gonna be like for me to actually work with you. I think this is a huge missed opportunity that I see when I'm looking at a lot of creative small business owners' websites. Now that a client has gotten to know you and learned that you can serve them, they're gonna to look to see what it's like to actually work with you in whatever capacity it is that you offer. Do you need to show pictures of your studio space if that is the meeting spot that I as a client am gonna be entering into? Tell me more insight into what you actually do for your clients here. Finally, tip number seven, call them to action. So to go back to our house analogy, you always love it if there's a host or a hostess that notices when you're feeling awkward and when you need the next step or whatever's gonna happen next. Maybe you need to know where the patio is or where the guest bathroom is. You need another glass of wine. You need to meet someone so you have somebody else to talk to. A good host or hostess knows when to come into those moments and help you find your next step. You are the host or the hostess on your website as well. You need to direct your reader to the next step. I have 10 quick ideas for you about what your call to action button on your about page could be. Get a free resource, find inspiration on the blog, listen to the podcast or YouTube show or Facebook Live or Instagram Live. Follow me on social media, check out services, hit the shop, get on my calendar, send us a note, see success stories, try for free. And those are the seven tips. Do you feel a little better? I hope so. A great about page builds rapport and gives a true authentic foundation for everything else that you've put into motion in your business. Comment below with your about page. I would absolutely love to take a peek and cheer you on and see what you're doing. Again, Jamie, so grateful that you have me on today. That was amazing, Ashlyn. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, would you show Ashlyn that you did by giving it a thumbs up and commenting below? And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for even more tips about how to market your photography business.